Guys, when it comes down to crazy things going on in the world that you need to know about, I would put quantum computing right up there at the top of that list. So think about this. So quantum computing, it's probably one of the coolest things, yet simultaneously one of the most terrifying things that we're gonna see in our lifetime. So quantum computing, it's 158 million times faster than the most sophisticated computer in the world that we have today. The most sophisticated supercomputer in the world that we have today. I mean, that's, that's something that's hard to really wrap your head around. So here's a measurement to put that into perspective. So quantum computers are so powerful that it can do in four minutes what the world's most advanced supercomputer today would take 10,000 years to do. Imagine that, four, four minutes, 10,000 years. And this is just the beginning of quantum computers. They can also crack any code based on digital technology in the world today instantly, the most sophisticated ones in the world, boom, done. Whether it's CIA, FBI, Chase Bank, anything, any highly protected system wiped out two seconds. Guys, we're in a fourth turning right now. So if you do not know what the fourth turning is, every 90 to 100 years, society breaks down. The old ways go away and a new thing is built. So think World War II, 90 to 100 years ago. The Civil War, 90 to 100 years before that. The American Revolution, 90 to 100 years before that. So every time there's a fourth turning, it's a huge 100 years level war along with a new reserve currency. And that's why getting survival food is more important than ever before. So now you can create your own stockpile of the best selling four Patriot survival food kits. It's not ordinary food. We're talking about good for 25 years survival superfood. They have different delicious breakfasts, lunches, dinners. You can make these meals in 20 minutes. Four Patriot Survival offers more than just food. They offer state-of-the-art generators, solar cell phones, solar cell phone chargers, solar flashlights, EMP shields, portable refrigerators that are solar powered, water filters. Definitely want those at the World Economic Forum saying that we're gonna have a water shortage that they're gonna push along. And so much more, this site is awesome, I love it. And right now, listeners of this show, the Brandon Aceto Show, will get 10% off their first order at 4 by using promo code Let's Go Brandon. Again, go to 4 and use promo code Let's Go Brandon to get your stockpile started today. I'm gonna put the link below in the description and go to 4 use promo code Let's Go Brandon. Be ready, don't get caught off guard, it's the ultimate insurance policy. And they can also be in two places at the same exact time. I'll give examples of this in just a minute, but this gives some credence to the multiverse theory. Now, let me give you an analogy of what, what really makes these things different than normal computers. So, I mean, quick, it's normal computers, we know it's a series of ones and zeros, right? Quantum computers, it's, it's a series of ones or zeros at the same time. Each digit, each unit, they could be either a one or a zero simultaneously. I know it sounds insane, but here, here's a, Quick analogy of sort of how this works. So imagine you have a massive library and there's one book that holds the answer to the question you have, right? So from the classical computer standpoint, you know, like the computers we use today, it'd be like sending one librarian to go through each book one by one until, you know, they find the right book. So the librarian can be fast and everything, but they still have to check each book one after the other. But with quantum computers, now instead of one librarian, imagine you could magically create thousands of librarians each checking a different book at the same exact time. They work together and find the answer infinitely faster. That's how this works. So, I mean, this is a really basic way to describe how it works, but it's a step in the direction of the how and the why behind it. So there's two things that you need to know about quantum computing to really know the mechanics behind it. One's called the superposition, which we'll talk about now. The next is called entanglement, which we'll talk about in a second. So the superposition, imagine that you have a coin and when you're spinning the coin on a table. It's never fully heads, never fully tails, right? But it's showing both. So when it's spinning, you can't really say if it's one or the other. It's not ever heads, it's not ever tails until it stops. Then that's when it becomes one or the other. So while the coin's spinning, it's in a superposition. So that's how the quantum computer is set up just permanently. It's in a constant state of showing one or the other instead of being a flat coin on the ground, it's a spinning coin. So that's how the things work in the quantum mechanics world. So it's like each particle of the quantum computer, it's an electron, but it doesn't have to be in one position or the other. It's in a state of being at both at the same time. But when you stop the measure, it's like stopping the coin. That's when it chooses to be one state or the other. And that's when you could observe it. So why is this significant? So that's, it's not a binary thing. 
Like I said, traditional computers, they work in a series of ones and zeros, like a series of coins that are heads or tails on the table, one after the other. But the quantum superposition allows the quid bits or the quantum version of bits to be in a combination of ones and zeros at the same time. So that's why they're able to process vast amounts of information simultaneously. So the ability of quid bits to exist in superposition is one of the foundational principles behind quantum computing. It's what can potentially give quantum computers. And so this is freaky stuff. This kind of makes you question the fundamental nature of reality. It's like at a deeper level, a quantum superposition challenges our you know, traditional understanding of how the universe works. It brings up the philosophical question of, do we live in multiple universes? Is there more universe than one? Is there more versions of ourselves than one? People like Elon Musk and Neil deGrasse Tyson would argue, yes, there's 100% certainty that, we, that multiple universes are real. So the next one you really have to know is quantum entanglement. So this is where two objects can be in two different places, but they're doing the exact same thing and affect one another. So imagine you have two spinning tops on a table, right? But they're magically connected or entangled. So the way one spins can instantly affect the way the other one spins, no matter how far apart they are. Top one spins to the right, top two spins to the right. Stop top one, spin to the left, the other one starts spinning to the left. Stop one completely, the other one stops completely. So this is how the, the quid bits inside the quantum computing work. They get t entangled. So that means that once the state of one quid bit can depend on the state of the other quid bit. And this crazy connection allows quantum computers to process vast amounts of possibilities simultaneously at an exponential level compared to the traditional computers. Here's some of the most significant potential use case for, for quantum computing. So Cryptography and security, obviously. Listen, whoever creates this first in the full extent of what it could be instantly is gonna be able to hack anything they wanna hack. But the positive thing is that we'll eventually use quantum computers to create more sophisticated encryption methods, but initially it's gonna be like a doomsday scenario for cryptography. Another thing that's gonna be revolutionary for is drug discovery in healthcare. So quantum computers can simulate algorithmic complex molecular and chemical reactions with high precision. So the ability to do this can tremendously expedite drug discovery processes and provide insights into biological mechanisms potentially leading to completely novel treatments that we've never even thought of before because of how much faster you could simulate all this stuff. So the research and development takes up a tremendous amount of time and money in healthcare and this could er eliminate all that or cut it drastically. So think about how this can impact things like transportation, you know, mapping out routes. Think about how much leakage happens in businesses just from not doing things in an optimal way in the, from the standpoint of timing, routes, planning, people, who goes where, what's the best time to go. You know, it's a lot for humans to process, it's a lot for supercomputers to process, but quantum computers can process it infinitely faster in a deeper way. Materials, you know, understanding the material properties of things. So at a quantum level, it could lead to the discovery of materials with desired characteristics that we have no idea or even exist right now. So kind of like superconductors that work at room temperature or more efficient solar panels or more efficient solar cells. Now, take quantum computing and match it up with AI. Imagine what that's going to be like. So AI is already changing the world, but training machine learning models, especially deep neural networks, requires a significant amount of computer power. But quantum computers will certainly speed up that those algorithms and offer all new sorts of AI approaches. Another one, financial modeling. Imagine what this will do for Wall Street. I mean, it might even get to the point where you could predict what's gonna happen with the stock market, which, I mean, that would kind of suck because we're, what's the fun in that? But all the billionaires already have pretty much a stronghold on the information already, already with the payment for water flow and their AI trading platform. So that part, I'm not super excited about. And imagine climate modeling. You know, we could already predict the weather at a reasonably high accuracy within a few days, but with this, we could potentially predict floods, predict hurricanes, tornadoes, predict wildfires, predict anything, predict what the precise weather is going to be weeks and months out ahead of time. Imagine what you do from a search optimization standpoint. You know, we already use ChatGPT for a lot of stuff, but there's a concept called Grover's algorithm, a quantum algorithm that can search through unsorted databases faster than any classical algorithm. So this could speed up at an almost exponential rate what you could do from a search engine standpoint. Now there are some limitations, you know, they, these uh, computers are very sensitive, only the biggest places have them right now, but they have to be created underground because they're very sensitive to vibrations, even from like a truck driving by, and they have to be kept at zero degrees to operate properly. Now, 
Why do I bring all this up? I bring this up because we're in what's called a fourth turning, which I'm going to talk about that in depth in the future. But it's basically every 90 to 100 years, shit goes down. The old ways go away, and a new society comes along. So, you know, look back. There's World War II is the last one. Before that, Civil War. Before that, American Revolution. Shit goes down. The reserve currency status changes, and there's a massive war that just kind of wipes out the old ways of life, and a new way comes along. We're in that right now, and AI, quantum computing, they're going to be a part of that. Who knows where this goes, but the next five to ten years is going to be pretty crazy. But after that, after the fourth turn, it's always a Goldilocks period. So in the short term, buckle up because shit's going to go down, but in the long term, the future does look bright. If you got value out of this enjoyed, check out this playlist right here. And if you want to connect with me on my next, Click on the link below. I've been very successful at content creation. I gained over 40,000 subscribers on my YouTube channel in my first year. And for the past six months, I've been working with Patrick Bed David as his content coordinator. So I have a lot of insight to provide. I would love to talk to you. Connect with me on the next. Thank you for watching. I'll see you later.